can cope with an unwashed Charlie for a minute. Please ignore the stacks of books and journals and assorted paperwork behind me. I'll try and get central in the frame. So, I thought that I might record a vlog charting the final two days of June. It's currently the 29th and if you watched my wool gathering video then you will know that for a fair bit of time now I have been experiencing further bodily pain. Last Wednesday things came to a head and ever since my bones have continued to ache but I awoke this morning determined to go for a walk around Macclesfield Forest because I haven't been there in a fortnight. I planned to go last week but then as I say this happened and sometimes I reach this stage where I get this big worry about one day not being able to, you know, not having the ability to walk the hills and the inclines that I take or maybe not being around the area. So I also wanted to do a trail that I have decided is my favourite walk but then I made it longer for myself today and I was gone for a while on this walk but it got my hips and my knees working more than they have worked before and I'm hoping that through working them a bit more despite the pain it might actually work to alleviate the pain. Since I am positively filthy, I mean look at this greasy hair, I am going to disappear and I'm going to go and I'm have a, going to have a bath. Uh, I can't do that, I cannot do that. I can't say it like that. I'm going to go and have a bath. I um, I have two chapters left of Antipoldi and the Sicilian Lions which I am going to listen to and then in this somewhere within all of these stacks of books is one that I am currently reading and so I'm hoping to read that but in these next two days I also want to finish the next chapter of the final Doris book which as I say Hopefully I only have about 20,000 words left of this book now and I'm looking forward to it. Last night I went through my plans and I've been writing for days wondering where these bits that I'm writing are going to go and I've realised that all the bits that I've thought are for this chapter are actually two chapters away. So I've been writing for the final chapter without even recognising that I'm writing for the final chapter. So I went back to my plans and I saw I actually only have about six paragraphs of notes for this chapter left and usually I can get about a thousand words to two thousand words based on each paragraph and what needs to happen within this chapter from these notes. So I'm going to open a fresh document write the scene that is written in my notes to write, edit that into the document and then do it as each scene as opposed to working on the entire chapter as a whole and I still have to make the decision as to whether I am going to have nine chapters because throughout this entire process at first it started as three parts of three and one epilogue. Then I recognised that a story was no longer necessary so it became three parts of three. I just have to see how this idea I've got formulating in my head is going to work. 
I think that I still need three chapters because I think that the final chapter is a culmination of the entire book and it's where everybody's going to be making the decisions about where they want their lives to go post series. It's just I haven't thought as hard about the, the penultimate chapter with both our Doris and indisputably Doris the penultimate chapter is one that once I'd written the almost point of no return chapter, we had that one there where it was all about dealing with the fallout of the point of no return and then we had a final chapter. But this time around, I just, I, I'm not sure whether it's necessary to have this chapter there but I won't know until I get to it, which I'm hoping to get to this week. It's a weird one to have been only writing a chapter a month, but it's also a weird novel for me to have written because I found it more challenging than I have done any of my previous books. But for now, let's go. Let's go get clean. And let's hope I don't get a phone call today asking me to go into work to do some overtime. There is nothing I can do about the fly buzzing around my head. I have finished reading Antipoldi and the Sicilian Lions by Mario Giordano. And it was translated by John Brown John. It's a good mystery with an older detective whose family have made her move to Sicily basically because they're worried about her being depressed. So she goes and this man dies and she decides that she's going to figure out how to solve it because she had some connection to the man. This to me would make really good holiday reading. It's very light, very cosy really the essence of what you're looking for with a cosy because of the cast that is there. Also, if we're looking at it from a crime writing perspective, then Giordano has done the classic thing of having a narrator tell the reader the story and the narrator is taking on the reader's role of the... and this person is Antipoldi's nephew. And the entire time I was reminded of Miss Marple and her nephew Raymond. It was the connection there that I thought really worked well in the telling of this story. I listened to this as an audiobook and consuming the book in this medium meant that I actually ended up not being able to figure out who the killer was because I found that my brain was working differently. I felt very much like I was... L Thank you, Skip fam. <laughs> I felt like... I was very much listening to a radio play and perhaps I absorb them somewhat differently than when I'm reading. Perhaps I'm more of an active reader than I am a listener. I usually listen to this going to and from work so perhaps my mind was focused on something else. There's a lot of traffic at the moment due to these roadworks they've got so it's easier to get a book listened to. <sighs> Either way, I have the sequel on my phone ready to listen to, uh, but today, uh, when I spoke to you earlier, I forgot to mention that I'm also reading Vacant Possession by Hilary Mantel, which is the sequel to Every Day is Mother's Day, and so far I am 30% in. If I was reading this book in physical form, I would be about the 70 page mark, and it's only just getting to the story of this book after telling the reader everything that happened in the first. It's not as strong as the first. Every Day is a Mother's Day is extremely funny and there are some lines within that book where Mantel has managed to condense the character down to that one line and I understood it perfectly and I just... There were the moments where as a writer I was so impressed and envious at the talent but I haven't found that yet in Vacant Possession. Uh, we'll see how we go with that, but that is what I am going to read once 
I have finished doing some writing today. I also have a cup of tea. And I'm making something vegan that is akin to coronation chicken. And the protein stuff that I've used is currently cooling down. I lead a very exciting life indeed. Some people might question why I am dressed for winter on June the 30th when we've had some of the hottest weather in weeks and all I will say is that it is because these clothes were clean. The dog's going up outside my door because I'm talking and she can't see I'm talking to her. One moment. The dog is now in the room. I have never mentioned how I have to make sure that all of my pens are in places that she can't get to them because she has a propensity for eating pens. Yesterday I read some more of Vacant Possession by Hilary Mantel and I am now 60% of the way through this book. The next 20% after those pages I discussed yesterday is an improvement on what I read before. However, this in no way matches up to the first book and does suffer from being something of an unnecessary sequel. I say this because it's dealing with a lot of dramatic irony. If you knew certain relationships that characters had in the first book, then it's nice to see them re-examined here and they begin to interweave more and you get to see that maybe mistakes that previous generations have made have ended up meaning we're now seeing their children make the same mistakes as them and the repercussions that has and it also has some more interweaving that we perhaps um, wouldn't have expected. It also gives us answers to the question as to who was the father of Muriel's baby from the first book since Muriel was supposed to be this character who never left the house. I think it's an unnecessary sequel. The next 40% of this book may convince me otherwise but currently it's not the case. I didn't get as much writing as I would have hoped to do yesterday but that is always the way when it comes to me making any sort of plans. However I did get some writing done of this chapter of Doris. Theo and his grandfather have had a conversation. I have already written the next part so I didn't have to worry too much about that. I just had to bridge the gap between two scenes and I will continue to write today. I've had some book post. I thought that I should mention that I've had some book posts because that seems to be the way of most of my vlogs. I have received Test Signal which is an anthology of new northern writing edited by Nathan Connolly and this was a partnership between Dead Ink and Bloomsbury. I was contacted by Alla Harold a few weeks ago asking whether I would want to read and review this book because I am northern and a lot of people see that as my only personality trait quite honestly. It is probably one of my only personality traits. Grumpy Northern Tea. I remember seeing the publishers ask for submissions last year and I don't tend to write short fiction otherwise I would have liked to have submitted something myself but I've seen some great names in Northern writing featured in here and also it's just nice to see these authors being uh, mentioned here and getting to share their work because so often there is this idea that people in the north are uneducated and that we do not have it within us to write anything outside of gritty depression or comedy that's all about beers and beers and busts so well that should be beers busts and bust ups really she's in a bag the dog is in a bag get out the bag I'm putting this book on my TBR for July and I 
I'm looking forward to it and looking forward to seeing what some writers I've previously read are getting up to and exploring some new writers' works that I haven't heard of before. If you're interested, this book comes out on the 8th of July and you should be interested because the North. I think there'll probably be one clip tomorrow in which I will round off everything that's happened today. Um, but I very much just wanted to focus on the final two days of June. This dog didn't seem to want to let me. And tomorrow I have plans to do quite a lot of filming to, you know, we've got mid-year book freak out things, we've got best books so far, we've got July TBRs, we've got June wrap-ups, a whole host of things to record tomorrow. So before the dog destroys whatever is in that box over there, I'm gonna disappear and I might even see you with washed hair tomorrow. <laughs>
is so that Muriel gets her voice. And I get that, and I appreciate the idea of giving someone who's often maligned by society a voice. And I appreciate it, I just don't think that it was done well here. There are moments of brightness in this book where the prose would leave me feeling as thrilled as I felt by the prose in Every Day is Mother's Day. I liked seeing the growth of Colin and Sylvia's relationship really and how they've changed from the characters I saw in this first book. It just felt like the book was building up to something that it never reached. Therefore, I end up leaving the entire thing feeling incredibly underwhelmed and disappointed and continuing to question the necessity of this one. I do like how Mantel will mention the supernatural, and I say this every time, she'll mention the supernatural and the reader just has to accept that it's there and not question it and it can have absolutely nothing to do with the plot at all and it's just a hint there and it feeds into this sometimes how we are superstitious without entirely recognising why we're superstitious and within Mantel's prose it's often there to raise a question. Admittedly, I think that Every Day is Mother's Day and Vacant Possession are precursors to the book Beyond Black. And I think that a lot of the themes that we see in Beyond Black could be linked to these two books. Um, so it was nice to go back to the beginning of Mantal's career, see how she started, and having read that book, think, uh, well, I can see where this originated. I do think that Beyond Black dealt with the themes in a more mature fashion and I could see how the writer had improved. I'd recommend Every Day is Mother's Day by Hilary Mantel. I think that this book is hilarious and does capture the time and the setting rather well. And I'd say about Vacant Possession to only read this book if you are a Mantel completist or if you're just looking for something to read quickly. Um, it's not the worst book in the world but I just don't see the need for it. Either way, that's me done. If you have read any of the books that I have mentioned here or think that you might like to read them in future, then do please let me know in the comments. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and until next time, that is all.